Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about cameras for vlogging. I spent a lot of time doing research and I was trying to decide which camera I should buy. It came down to three choices and I really didn't know which one to, do, to buy. So I bought all three of them. And I'm gonna review them and I'm gonna share this with you so you can know which camera to buy. This is not a sponsored uh, review. I'm not being paid by any other companies. If they suck, I'm gonna tell you they suck. So this is the setup that I have right now. This is a Joby Gorilla tripod and this is basically a ruler. And I attached the three cameras to the ruler. So over here you have the Panasonic LX10. This is the Canon G7X Mark II and this is the Sony RX100 Mark V. So before we start, I wanted to let you know that all three cameras have the same setup right now. Uh, all of them are in movie mode. Uh, ISO is set to automatic. Uh, white balance is set to automatic. And face detection is on. The footage you're going to see, it's what? Out of the box. This is what you're going to get out of the box. Um, all three of the cameras are kind of like pointing to the center of my face. So I'm going to try record at the same time with all three of them. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to put them together because I only have iMovies right now. I'm trying to get my hands on Final Cut Pro. Um, uh, it's around five o'clock in the afternoon right now. So it's a kind of like a little, a little bit dark outside, uh, but I wanted to shoot on this condition so I could test the capabilities of the, each camera on low light. I've done a little shooting with them, a little bit of shooting with e uh, each of them. Um, I'm really liking all of them, honestly. Uh, there are some pros and cons between every one of them. Uh, I'm gonna share that with you and you can be the judge. So that being said, let's do some shooting. So right now we're inside the house. Uh, this is supposed to be my studio, but I haven't finished it. Um, there's a whole mess here, I pardon, so it's, bear with me. So right now, there's some soft boxes there. I don't know if you can see how well they adapt. Having a bright, a bright background. So there's the Sony, there's that one. Also the audio quality, uh, that's something you guys can hear. I'm gonna be switching from camera to camera so you can uh, compare the audio quality. Uh, I'm gonna be walking around the house so it's gonna get dark and bright and dark, but this is good. Uh, this is to compare the low light capabilities of the cameras. Um, yeah, this room is really dark right now. I don't know if you can tell. So far the Canon is doing the best job. Um, it definitely looks brighter than, than the other cameras. I'm gonna walk uh, into the bathroom. The light here is kind of warm, it's yellowish. I don't know if you can see, um, yep, so let me walk around the house, see how well the cameras adjust to the changes in the light, um, this is also like kind of, kind of like a bluish light, I don't know if you can tell, um, let's walk to the living room, so this is the living room, and let me see how well, having a bright background, how well the cameras adjust. Um, what do you think? For me, I think the Canon is winning right now. My face is kind of dark on the Panasonic and Sony is also a little bit dark. Um, let me walk outside so you can see how well it adjusts so this is me walking outside and there's a little bit of color change and it's around five o'clock on the afternoon 4 45 right now i don't know if you can see uh, let's see how they focus well they focus <laughs> so my face the background my face 
the background my face the background and I'm sorry I'm not looking at the lens right now but I gotta see what's going on on the screens so all three cameras have the screen flipped up um, I, I kinda like the colors of the Sony they look kinda natural um, see yep those uh, black patches you see right there uh, that's me burning these because that tree right there has a lot of leaves so let's see how the sky looks um, what do you think what do you think let's see how the grass looks and right now well the grass is not it's not even green right now because it's fall and it's, I think it's dying um, let me see how well the focusing system works my face background my face which one focuses faster background my face I can't really tell my face the Panasonic uh, oh also another thing I forgot to mention how is the image stabilization is working because right now for me the Canon does is doing the better job uh, it's kind of Canon is kind of fighting to focus on my face right now Panasonic is focusing well the Sony is focusing yeah there so another thing I wanted I wanted to test was the image stabilization I know the Canon has a great image stabilization Sony is kind of shaky and Panasonic is kind of shaky but to be fair this this ruler thing is kind of bouncy so let me try to hold it still what do you think Let me let me do some macro shots. I'm gonna do try to do close up. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. There we go. Let's see this guy. Okay. So this camera mount that I have right now is falling apart. I'm scared that the whole three cameras are gonna fall to the floor. So I'm gonna basically. Oh, yeah. It is kinda. So I'm gonna walk inside so you can see how well the cameras adjust. And you can definitely tell the Canon and the Sony are doing a better job. I don't know what's wrong with the Panasonic. So, close the door. So, what do you guys think? I think on low light, the Canon does a better job than the rest of them. Um, also, think. Another thing I forgot to mention is the Panasonic does not have an ND filter, uh, which if you want to do long long exposure during daytime, that's another fact to consider. Um, this is a Canon 70D. This is uh, what I usually shoot with. Um, so yeah, let me know on the comment section which camera do you think is better. 
I also forgot to mention that all three of the cameras are set to 1080p at 30 frames per second. So let's talk a little bit about each camera. Um, comfort wise, I would say the Canon is the most comfortable one. It has a rubber part right here and it also has a rubber part right here for your thumb. It feels really comfortable. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's gonna slip from your hand. Um, this camera does not shoot 4K. Uh, it does 1080. 1080p up to 60 frames per second so if you're planning on doing slow motion I wouldn't recommend this camera otherwise the image stabilization is great low light condition is great I would say it's the best out of all three uh, you can tilt the screen up and it also tilts down like this it feels heavy it feels well built it it is a solid camera it has a touch screen so that's another good thing like the Panasonic also feels well built, um, it's pretty solid, uh, it does not have rubber on the front but it has a groove so um, I would say from 1 to 10 is about a 6 on comfort. Uh, this camera does shoot in 4K, um, it has a touch screen. The only bad thing about this is the screen only tilts up but it doesn't tilt you can't tilt it down like the Canon does. Uh, Another thing about this camera is the lens is, is a fast lens. It's 1.4, but I wouldn't choose this camera just because of that because you can barely tell. Um, it, the 1.4 only works at 24 uh, millimeters. So as soon as you zoom in a little bit, let's say from 24 to 28, it automatically jumps to 1.8. So don't let that be a decision maker. The Sony feels pretty heavy too, feels well built, but uh, it doesn't have any rubber and it doesn't have any groove. So it's kind of like flat and it's also a little bit slick. So it does have a patch of rubber right here, but I would say this is the, out of all three of them, this is the most uncomfortable one. It feels like it can slip out of your hand pretty easily. So. Uh, that's something to consider. The screen does tilt up and it also tilts down like the Canon does. So that's good. This camera also shoots in 4K. Uh, but the cool thing about this camera is that if you're planning on shooting slow motion, it does a slow motion pretty, pretty well. Uh, you can shoot uh, 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second. You can also do 250, 500, and 1,000 frames per second. Uh, that being said, the higher you go on frames per second, the lower the quality. So it's not like you can shoot 1,000 frames per second at 1080p. That's not gonna happen. This camera has a viewfinder. You can tilt this little thing, you put it out like that, and then you can use the viewfinder, and it looks amazing. Um, I don't see myself using that, but uh, for some, for those of you that like it, uh, that's another thing to consider about the Sony. This camera is a thousand dollars. Canon is seven hundred dollars, and this one is also seven hundred dollars. But uh, I wanted to put this out, so I actually paid six hundred and thirty dollars for this camera because if you're a student, Panasonic has a ten percent discount for students, so that's uh, a good thing. And B&H will uh, do a price match on that. They will, uh, they will give you the 10% that Panasonic uh, gives. So that's where I bought the camera. And that's pretty much what I wanted to put out. Those are, you know, some key, key points uh, of each camera. If I needed to choose one, it's too soon to tell. I gotta do further testing, but so far, I like all three of them. I can't be specific and say this is better than the other one. It's up to you. Uh, it depends. If you're planning on shooting uh, slow motion, Sony wins by far. If you're planning on shooting on low light conditions and you don't mind the 4K, maybe you don't use 4K, I would definitely go with the Canon. And let's say you do want a 4K but you don't want to do slow motion, Panasonic. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Uh, and that's it. That's pretty much it. I don't have anything else. Thanks for watching.